Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Rob Teal, professional car restorer and custom car builder. Today I'm going to expand out on the welding skills I've been showing you over the last few videos. And we're going to tackle this repair here on this car. Now this is what we started with, a rust hole in the middle of it, and the panel behind it rusted as well. Now, it's a situation where we've got two panels sandwiched together, the moisture's got in there and rusted it, so we're going to make two new pieces, weld them together, and we're going to use a series of plug welds to join the two panels together. And I'll walk you through that step by step. And then I'm going to show you that sometimes you need to change the angle of approach on your welder to change the way the weld sits in the panel. Stay with us and we'll walk you through it step by step. I'm just about to start now, so the plan is to work out where to cut the panel. Now it's a double skin panel that's spot welded together, so we're going to drill these spot welds out and we'll take the top layer off and see if we've got to do any repairs to the bottom layer and usually there will be some sort of repair to do there and then we will fix that up, put some weld through primer on it, seal it all up, make a replacement patch for the top and weld it in place. So I'll just draw a few lines on so that we know where we're going to cut it. So I think we're going to go just through here above the rust, give it plenty of room and then I'll come down here and I'll take this whole piece off and it wraps around the corner and there's a row of spot welds down the front as well. So first of all, I'll just knock the spot welds out. Now, my favourite weapon is a 5 16th drill bit or an 8mm, both the same size. And the tricky bit is to drill just halfway through. So if you go all the way through, you're going to have a row of holes in the back panel. And what we're trying to do is salvage that back panel. So we only want to drill through the top layer of metal. Once again I'm using my 5 inch cutting wheel on my angle grinder and uh, I'll just cut along these lines and just around the corner there and then we should be able to take this outside piece off without a lot of drama. Now once again, the trick is halfway through. You've got another layer of steel underneath and had I kept this line going up to touch that one, I would have cut into this section of the fender up there. So what I'll do is I'll grab my die grinder and just cut that last little piece with the die grinder. If you don't own a die grinder, if you can get this piece free and just rock it backwards and forwards, you can get it off easily enough. The die grinder is one of your most versatile tools you're going to buy. Now, a lot of problems that you're going to have at home will be you won't have enough compressed air to run a pneumatic one, but you can get an electric one, they work just as well. You're going to need a variety of burrs. Now, this one's got quite a sharp shoulder on it, and I'm going to use it to cut the last little piece in the car. I'm going to use the die grinder now on a 45 degree angle, and just use it to cut the line up the last little bit. Another handy little tool that you're going to have in your hand all the time is one of these. Now this started out in life as a gasket scraper. They're pretty inexpensive and they need to be because you're going to use a few of them. You're going to break them, wear them out and things like that. 
But what I've done is I've ground a bit of a radius on the end of it and I've grind it both sides back to a sharp edge. Now, razor blade sharp is too sharp as long as you sort of come back to a point it works well. But we're going to use this to chisel this panel off the car. layer off as you can see it's completely rusted through and the inner panels rusted as well but you can see that I cut down here and I haven't touched the inside panel and we've just nicked it on the top that's not really enough to even be worried about so had this piece behind here been solid with a little hole in the middle there we could have just welded the new piece over the top and we wouldn't have to worry about this little bit in the back there the next step will be to make a replacement section to go in here and then we'll make a new outside piece to go on there and we can put it all together. I've got my new piece of material. This little piece of frame in the back is just a little bit heavier than what the panel is, so we've got a suitable piece of material to replace it with. Now, there's a small triangle pressed in here that the manufacturer has put in there either to make it look pretty or a little bit stronger, so we can easily put that back in. So we'll just have to mark on the new piece of material where it's going to go. That's the top of it there. That parallels that line down there, so we can do the same on this piece. Parallel down there. And I'll just measure down the top of the piece of material. We'll cut it off just under our outside panel. So we'll come down 3 8 of an inch. Mark that across there. So just measure across here, and the top of the triangle is about 7 eighths, and it is roughly an inch and a sixteenth long. Press this out of there, that'll match the car pretty much out originally. I've just made this little triangle shape in the piece of sheet metal, and all I did to do that was I put this piece in my vise with a soft jaw behind it, and then one of my broken off gasket scrapers that I used to use for a chisel, I've just radiused the end of it, and then I've just got in there and just tapped it with the panel hammer and done one edge at a time. Very simple little shape, very easily done and at a glance when it's put in the car it just looks like the factory did it. Just going to trim this down to shape. So we're a little bit off the top. I'm 
going to cut this well below the join so that I can get a nice bit of weld in here and have enough room to grind it off. And I'll just mark the other side of this panel. Okay, I've got my new panel cut to size and I'm just going to mark around it and then we'll get the angle grinder and we'll cut the piece out. Safety goggles. Right, the new piece pretty much fits in the hole, so I'll just go ahead and I'll prepare all around the edges of it so I can weld it in. I've just prepared the area to be welded, both pieces of metal, I've ground all the paint away. I'll talk to you in a little while about weld through primers. This silver on this side is a zinc weld through primer and we need that to go between our two layers of metal to stop it rusting in the future. But even though it's got it on there, I've ground it where I'm going to weld it. Now, another thing that you guys might find interesting, these little grinding discs are called Rolox. R-O-L-O-C-K-S and they just twist onto these backing pads. They come in a variety of grits and uh, you can get a 75mm disc, you can get a 50mm disc, so it's 3 inches and 2 inches, and they're great. They'll fit into little places for getting things cleaned up and I use them for finishing, so when I rough down a weld with 36 grit, I'll finish them with an 80 grit disc and things like that just to clean them up and look a bit nice. I'm just about to weld the new piece in so what I'm going to do is, because I can't actually physically hold it in place, I'm just going to hold it on a little bit of an angle and get a few tacks in place and then just fold the tacks so that the panel will fit back in place in the car. So if we've done our work properly, everything will line up when we tap it down. If not, we'll have to muck around with it a bit. and take a little cut off the bottom.
Okay, I'm just going to let that cool down a little bit. Now if you look carefully, I'm putting my weld line just back from the corner. I don't like to weld an actual corner, mainly because when you're grinding it, it's pretty easy to grind all the way through a corner and you've achieved nothing. You wind up cutting the two pieces of metal together. So I'll usually just go around the corner and put the weld just off to one side of it. Now we've got it tacked in place. I'll just put a few more tacks in to stabilise it and then I'll start welding between the tacks, just like we did previously. Okay, we'll just let that cool down again. I've just given that three or four minutes to cool down, and now I'll just go around with the second stage of the weld. Okay, we'll leave that to cool again and give it another three or four minutes. And the next time we'll be able to fill in these last two spots and complete the weld. Now, as usual, I'm doing vertical ups just because I like the penetration. And you would have seen that I've had a little hole blow in it just here. The big thing is you don't panic. You just sort of get there and plug it up as you go and continue on. That's completed our weld. I'll just leave that to cool again and then I'll grind that piece off smooth.
I've sanded it down all the way around with the disc sander, but this last corner I can't get into, and I'm starting to re remove material from the edge here where I want to weld to. So I'm just going to finish the last little bit with the die grinder, and this time I've got a little Christmas tree shaped um, burr on the end of it. <laughs> Finish the last little bit of face of the grinding and it's completely smooth all the way around. Now that's a, a perfect finish to build the next piece on the top of. And the next job now is I'll put a little bit of weld through primer over it and let that harden up a bit while we're making the new piece for the top and then we'll be able to weld the new top section in. Here's a couple more things you're going to need in your toolbox. A good pair of tweezers and a splinter probe. I've just got a little metal splinter in my finger. So unless you don't want to keep running home to mummy every five minutes to get your splinters pulled out, you're going to need these. Just a little fine one, I can hardly see it. It's still there. That's got him. Okay, there's two basic kinds of weld through primers on the market. There's a copper one, which comes out copper colour just like that, or you've got a zinc one, which comes out grey. Now, you can buy both in spray cans. Now, the big difference is, copper is if you're going to do resistance welding, like with a spot welder with the two arms that clamp together. The zinc one is for MIG welding. So that's what we're using. Now, the zinc one I use a lot. Now, all it is, is cold galvanised, just plain old industrial cold galvanised, and it's a much cheaper to buy it by a big tin than to buy spray cans. So for what I do, I use a four litre tin and I just thin it with a bit of gun wash thinners, and it works perfectly. So you guys at home, spray cans are probably the way to go because you're not going to use much of it. Okay, I've just finished that with a finer disc, just to smooth it out a little bit. And I'll just um, throw a little bit of weld through on. Now, if you put a lot of air out and not much paint, you'll put it on fairly dry and it'll set up fairly quick for what we're doing. That's what we're after. And that's about how much you need. Now, the weld through primers are not compatible with automotive paints. So whenever you work with them, it's just going to be the stuff that's sandwiched together that you can't paint later that you do with weld through. Any overspray that winds up on the outside where you want to work later on, you've got to clean all that off. And normally this car's in for a paint job, so it's all going to get stripped anyway. But these areas will be coated, they'll be protected from rust and all sealed up, and the welding process won't burn through it. I'm just going to make a small fold in this to make the corner where it wraps around here and it's a half inch, so I've just marked it down the front face and I'll just measure out half an inch and cut it off to that. Now, a lot of you will be noticing that I use predominantly imperial measurements. The simple fact is, when I started school, it was imperial, that's all we had. While I was at school, it changed to metric, so I've learned both. When I left school, I started working with a whole heap of people that were all imperial, so I went back to using imperial. But the main reason is, these cars were made in imperial. So if I'm working on a European car, I'll measure it in metric. Working on an Australian or an American car from this era, I'll measure it all in Imperial. Alright, I could just go and put this over in one of the folders and bend it. But I'll just show you a method you can use at home. Now, this is one of my off cuts of universal beam that I use a bit. And it's pretty easy to just line your edge up on that. And if you just sort of tap one hand a bit, and then get the other end lined up, tap it, you should be able to get it to just sit there. And then fold it in place with your bowl. 
you can actually make a reasonable fold just with the hammer and dolly. Now, as you can see, I've got the start of the fold in place there. Now, with a little bit more work, I can roll it around the corner, or what I can do is weld it in place and then just dress it around the corner and finish it on the car. I'm just going to prep the back of it and then I'll um, coat it with the weld through primer and we'll let that dry and then I'll prep all this and we'll weld it in place and then finish the fold off on the corner. Now I've got a little spot of rust on this piece of sheet metal so I have to focus on that, get rid of that and then just clean the rest of it up. Weld through prime the back of it. She's all cleaned up now and ready to go. a small gap here. Normally I'd have it buttered together but as it's happened I've cut the piece of metal a little bit small and that happens. And we can actually live with that. This area of the car is very stable with all this shape in here. It's not going to go anywhere and we're going to weld it a little bit differently this time anyway so this will help demonstrate it. So I've got my piece ready. I'll just tack it in place and then we'll start welding it.
Right, I've got this tacked in place now. It's stable, it's in the car, it's not going to move anywhere. Now, we've got a little bit different situation with this weld. We're putting a patch panel straight on top of another piece of metal. And what's going to happen is, our top piece of metal is going to superheat with the weld. So you're going to have molten metal flowing in there, but that heat's not going to be penetrating into the panel behind it. So, in essence, it can become explosive. It can start spitting at you and carrying on and blowing big holes in it as you weld it. How do we minimise that? You're going to have situations where it's going to happen, but how we minimise it? We push the welder. Now, with pushing the welder, the electric arc is going to be falling behind where we're putting the wire. So the wire is going to be dropping in onto the metal, and then the arc is going to be melting it back flatter behind it. Now, what will happen then is it will reduce the temperature of the weld on the back of the piece of metal. So it's one of the few times that I'll actually recommend pushing the welder apart from vertical ups. So we'll just do a little bit of welding, but because of the gap, we'll have to go fairly slow and uh, take our time with it, but it should come up really nice. So while that's cooling down, I'll just talk a little bit about angle of approach. Because electricity will always go to the shortest path, if you are dragging your welding tip along like that while you're welding, the electric arc is actually hitting the metal ahead of where it's welding. So it's actually cutting a little trench in the metal that the metal is actually falling into and laying in behind it and melting in place. When you push it, the arc is actually going the other way to the metal and that's what I was saying before. You push it along, the metal melts, it drops on the panel, and then the arc will actually burn it in as it goes behind it. And you can use this if you want to cool the weld on the back of your panel. Now, if you're welding thicker metal than a car, you'd have to have a lot more current to be pushing your welder to be getting penetration on it than what you would if you're dragging it along. But on car sheet metal, and if you're having trouble with it, and you've done all the things that I've suggested, and you're still finding that you're burning holes, it's probably just the speed you're travelling with your welder or the current you've got it set at. But you could try just changing the angle of approach of your welding tip and you might find that it works a bit better. Now this has cooled down enough that I can weld it a little bit more. Now with this repair today, it's very structural, it's very sound in there. With the shape of the panel, nothing really moves. So I can make my welds a little bit longer than what I normally would if I was welding through an area in a panel. 
So that's why I'm going a little bit further now and I'm letting it run a little bit hotter as well. But that's about as far as I want to push it for now. But when I come back I'll probably get that one, that one and that one in and maybe just tidy this bottom bit up and we'll let it cool down and do this last bit up here. And that's the spot where I ground away the piece of sheet metal earlier on. So that's a little bit thin there so it'll take a little bit more heat and a bit more work to actually build that piece of weld up in there. Okay, I've got one little bit left to go and I've just got to uh, get the front bit to sit in place. So I've got this fold pretty good, but I'll just finish it off on the car. So I'm using the car as the buck and I'm just going to bend the piece of metal around it. So that's sat in place pretty good. Still needs to cool down a little bit, so we'll just wait a little while and let the heat go out of it a bit and I can finish these last two little patches there. You will have noticed that the weld spattered a bit when I was welding this top one and it was because I hadn't cleaned enough paint off and the paint was actually burning under the weld and that was dispersing the gas but it burned away, I finished the weld and there's no uh, porosity in it at all so that's fine, we'll just grind that off and it'll be a happy weld. Okay guys, this is what we're aiming for. This is a no filler repair. I've ground down the weld, it's smoothed it out, it's disappeared all together in the panel and there's no lumps and bumps in it, there's no divots in it. It's a gas type weld, there's no porosity in it. So that is as good as it gets. This is a nice little repair. But we've also got to put back in the spot welds that we took out. Now normally I just use my spot welder and zap 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 they're all done. But you guys don't have access to that at home, so I'll show you how to do it with the MIG. Now we're going to do a series of plug welds, or rosette welds, whatever you want to call them. And they're made by drilling a hole through the outer panel and exposing the panel behind it. And then you start your weld right in the middle of the circle that you've drilled out. And you build a puddle of weld in the back and you let it build up until it fills the hole in. Now normally, 
I'd start my weld right in the middle, get a bit of a puddle going, and then I'll swing it in a circle. So I'll actually come up, weld across the top, and then do a loop around the bottom. And because heat rises, you weld the top bit first. When your weld becomes the hottest, you're welding at the bottom, and you've got that big piece of set weld on the top that's not going to want to run out or fall down or burn the panel away. Now, the other thing you've got to remember when doing plug welds, make sure you've got your two panels clamped together. If they're not touching, you're just going to keep melting your outside panel away if you're having some difficulty with it. So we'll drill a series of holes now, we'll clamp the panels together, and then we'll plug the weld them. I've just put a couple of marks on there where I'm going to put the holes. Now we've got that little triangle we made in the back piece, so we don't want to be putting a weld over that. So we've just gone past that. So I'm going to put three across the top, probably three down here, and might put four in the front up the front face. Now, once again, I'm using my 5 16 or 8 millimetre drill bit, and we're just going to drill through the outer panel. So don't get all excited and drill all the way through two bits of metal. So this one here where it's got a little bit of a gap behind it, we'll have to clamp that in to weld it. But the rest of them we've just cut through and we've touched on the piece of metal behind it without actually drilling into it. We're just going to use a pair of vice grips to clamp the two panels together. Now pays two, just give it a few taps with the hammer to make sure it's sitting together properly. the noise change when it actually settles down tight on the panel behind it. More sort of thuddy sort of a noise. That one there melted a bit out at the top because the two panels weren't touching completely together and mainly we've done it this way just to try and get the camera in there but you can just sort of save it, just sort of zap zap, stop, break your weld, let it cool down a little bit in the middle and then run the wire back into the red hot puddle but that's made a very nice weld. So I'll just tap the panel in a bit and get it sitting a bit better and we'll do these other ones. Okay, with that weld, I started in the middle, got a little bit of a weld puddle running on the back piece of metal, and then I swept it in an arc across the top and all the way around the, battle, the bottom, and we've come up to the starting point. 
and we've made a nice flat weld there. It's actually going to be very easy to grind off. Now it's not unusual for these to spit a bit because where you've drilled the hole you haven't got rid of all the material from the outer panel so there's some wafer thin pieces in there and they're just going to melt once the arc goes in there so you might get a few, bit more spatter than what you normally would but um, it's providing you get your safety gear on and things there shouldn't be any great problems. Now that's what I was talking about becoming explosive. This one actually spat and it blew the piece of metal out on the back of it. So I've just sat there and I've just zap 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 with the welder and I've brought it in. But I've got another little spot on this outside edge here. I'll just weld it up right now. So that one's done. Once that's ground off, that'll just disappear with the panel. Right, that's our plug welds done. Now a couple of them, I've come back and just filled in a few little low spots with welds so when I grind it off it'll be completely smooth. Now you will have noticed while I was welding, a couple of them started melting around them. All you've got to do is just break the arc and then come back in again and it should just fill and keep going. And with a little bit of practice, you'll be plug welding in no time at all. So I'm going to leave it cool down a little bit and then I'll grind it all off and the whole repair should disappear into the panel. It should be a really nice repair.